Hello, my name is Nico Schüler from Texas State University. This is a lecture for AP Music Theory Unit 7, specifically on secondary functions. The goal of this lecture is to get acquainted with secondary functions in tonal harmony, to hear and see some examples of secondary functions, to learn how to analyze them, to learn how to construct them, and to use them in musical contexts. So let's look at a piece of music uh, first. Actually, let's listen to a piece of music. Uh, this is the beginning of the first Bicycle Walls by Jacob Sawyer, a 19th century composer who was born in 1856 and died in 1885. Uh, this uh, piece was composed in 1885. It was the last piece uh, that Sawyer composed be before his untimely death from tuberculosis and it was uh, before published it was arranged by the composer um, Jackson. So here it is. Now, if we look at the score, we, we see that two of these measures have extra accidentals. We are in the key of G major, and these two measures have extra accidentals. So let's not analyze them uh, initially. Let's look at uh, the other chords that we have here in this first uh, system. Uh, so we are in uh, G, we start out on a one chord, then um, it goes to an A minor triad. Uh, in first inversion, it goes to D7, D, F sharp, A, C, D7, which is 5, 7, and uh, resolving to uh, the tonic. So um, here's the analysis, uh, 1, 2, 5, 7, 1. And uh, now if we look at um, this measure, then uh, let's analyze the pitches we have. We have E, G sharp, B, D. E, G sharp, B, D uh, creates a major minor seventh chords. Major minor seventh chords almost always function as a dominant, uh, but it is obviously not the dominant in the key of G major. Uh, it's a dominant that would tonicize a note that is a perfect fifth below E uh, and that would be A, uh, and A in the key of uh, G is two, it goes to A here. So this in fact is a five seven of two and we call it a secondary dominant. Um, so what are secondary dominants? There are major triads or major minor sevenths chords that want to resolve to a diatonic chord which is a chord within the key other than the tonic. Um, so in this example, we had a five, seven resolving to two. Um, a secondary dominance are usually not diatonic chords and thus require extra accidentals. The only exception is the five of three or five, seven of three in a minor key. And you may have used the uppercase uh, Roman seven uh, for uh, that chord, but really it functions as a five of three. Secondary dominance tonicize scale degrees other than one. So we call this tonicization, uh, the process of resolving to uh, a certain scale degree. Uh, the chords that appear on the tonicized scale degrees immediately after the secondary dominant are usually major or minor triads or another secondary dominant. They are not diminished triads or augmented triads because those would be instable chords. Uh, so if we go back um, to the bicycle walls, um, then we see another chord here. Um, and if we uh, try to analyze it, we have, so in our heads, we have to kind of stack them up in thirds, all the, the pitches that we see. So we have B, D sharp, 
F sharp, A. So uh, stacked up in thirds, it would be B, D sharp, F sharp, A, which is also a major minor seventh chord. So another dominant, but its root is B, which is obviously not the dominant in G. So B would tonicize a chord that is a perfect fifth below B, which is E. Uh, and E happened to be uh, the sixth scale degree or Roman six. So we have here a five, seven of six in second inversion. So five, four, three of six. So how does it work? It doesn't go to six, but it goes, it tonicizes E and the next chord is an E chord. And uh, this is how it works. Uh, so in the earlier slide, we said a secondary dominant can tonicize a diatonic uh, chord in that key, or it can tonicize another secondary dominant uh, that is found on that scale degree that is being tonicized. The second line uh, looks almost identical. There is one pitch different. Um, and so if we compare here measure three in the first line to measure three in the second line, we see in the second line we have A, in the first line we had B. So that changes the chord slightly. Uh, so in this case, uh, then the root is D sharp, F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, A is a diminished triad. And that is best labeled as seven diminished six of six. Why of six? Because D sharp, uh, because this is a leading tone chord, a diminished triad is usually a leading tone chord. It leads to a chord or a scale degree that is a minor second above its root. So if D sharp is the root, it leads to E, and E is the sixth scale degree in G. So this is seven diminished six of six. So let's, uh, now we have fully analyzed this. Um, in the first line, we have two secondary dominants. In the uh, second line, we have a secondary leading tone chord leading to the secondary dominant leading to a diatonic chord. Let's listen one more time. So secondary leading tone chords are diminished triads or half diminished sevenths chords or fully diminished sevenths chords that want to resolve to a diatonic chord, that means a chord within the key, other than the tonic, or a secondary dominant that is found on that scale degree, that is built on that scale degree that is being tonicized. Secondary leading tone chords are not diatonic chords and thus require extra accidentals. Secondary leading tone chords tonicize scale degrees other than one. And the chords that appear on the tonicized scale degrees immediately after the secondary dominant are usually major or minor trides or another secondary dominant. Uh, here is another uh, example. I want to play, let's listen first. This is Clara Schumann. Uh, this is um, toward the beginning of the piano sonata in G minor. So it starts, this excerpt starts here in measure four. Uh, here is, uh, this is how it sounds. Now I want, us to listen to it a little bit uh, slower one more time. So here's another recording a little slower. So if we analyze the diatonic chords, um, and of course we are in a minor key, so uh, we would consider the raised seven scale degree as the diatonic node. So we go from one to seven diminished six five to one six, 
and later to four, six, and later to five. But inserted in between here are two other chords. So let's uh, try to analyze them. So again, um, we want to uh, identify the pitches and in our head or on extra staff paper, we want to stack them up in thirds. And as it happened, um, both of them are in root position actually here. So B, D, F, and A flat. B, D, F, A flat is a fully diminished seventh chord. So that would function as a leading tone chord. Um, B being the secondary leading tone leading to um, C. Uh, and uh, I just noticed uh, that uh, the label here is incorrect. It is not in the four chord is not in first inversion. It is in root position. Uh, so let's uh, try to ignore uh, the six here. So B leads to C. So that means uh, this is seven diminished seven of four leading to four. And this is a C sharp seven chord, C sharp, E, G, B flat, also a fully diminished seventh chord that uh, leads to a D chord and the D chord is Roman five. So the analysis um, looks like this and uh, here the uh, four chord is corrected. Uh, so we have uh, this progression and let's listen one more time in the slower version. So the root movements of secondary chords are as follows, uh, meaning the root movements means uh, the roots of one chord to the root uh, of the next chord in terms of intervals. A secondary dominant uh, or any kind of dominant um, has a falling fifth from the root of the five chord to the tonicized scale degree, a perfect fifth down, or of course, uh, inverted a perfect fourth up. Um, and the root of a leading tone chord resolves a minor second up to the root of the, tonici uh, the tonicized chord or that scale degree. Right? So how do we construct them? We first identify a scale degree or chord that you want to tonicize. So let's pick D in this case. So in the key of C that would be two uh, the second scale degree, we could build a Roman two on top of this. So for the secondary dominant, look for a perfect fifth above the node to be tonicized. And this is the root of the secondary dominant. Perfect fifth above D is A. And then build a major triad or a major minus seventh chord on that node. So A, C sharp, E as a triad or A, C sharp, E, G as a seventh chord. Or for leading tone chords, identify the scale degree that uh, needs to be tonicized. Then for a secondary leading tone chord, look for a minor second below the node to be tonicized. So minor second below D is C sharp. And this is the root of the secondary leading tone chord. Then build a diminished triad or a half diminished seventh chord or fully diminished seventh chord on that note. In this example, I build a fully diminished seventh chord on that note, C sharp, E, G, B flat, tonicizing D. Voice leading considerations. There are no special voice leading considerations. Um, uh, really the uh, secondary leading tones resolve up by step and the secondary leading tones are the third of the secondary dominant or the root of the secondary leading tone chord. Just like in regular dominants and regular leading tone chords, the leading tones resolve up by step and the seventh of any seventh chord resolves down by step. Doubling rules, uh, very similar. We do not double the leading tone and we do not double the seventh of any seventh chord. So why do we need secondary dominance? To expand the harmonic vocabulary and to provide a greater variety of harmonic color. 
And I would now like to go to the piano and give you an oral perspective. So I would now like to play some progressions on the piano and so we can all listen to how they sound. Uh, and as I explained, um, the secondary functions allow the composer to have a broader harmonic vocabulary and to have more harmonic color. Um, if we consider just a diatonic progression, that means just with triads, with chords, there, um, they could be seven chords too, but just uh, chords that are diatonic in the key, uh, then our repertoire is limited to the common root movements of fifth down, third down, or second up. Uh, of course, it can be a mixture of it. The longest progression I could possibly play with just diatonic uh, chords is starting on one, going to three, going to six, going to four, going to two, going to five or five seven, and resolving to one. Of course, I could uh, delay the resolution to 1 if after 5-7 I go deceptively to 6 and then I could go to 4 and to 2 again uh, before going to a dominant functioning chord like 5 or Roman 7 uh, and then resolving to 1. Um, but uh, secondary functions again allow uh, more possibilities. Uh, so if we think of the possibly longest uh, progression, then we can uh, even tonicize the three chord, although that is not very common. But it would sound like this. Uh, of course, at first establish the key, and then go to five, seven of three, going to three, to six, maybe even make the six into uh, five of two or five seven of two um, that is also possible going to two I can make the two into five of five by simply raising the third or adding a seventh five seven of five going to five and going back to one Now the most common uh, secondary dominant is actually the 5 of 5. So I can have a predominant progression and now go to 5, 7 of 5 and then add the 7th to the 5. So 5 of 5 is most common but I can also go from 1, make the 1 into a 5 7 of 4 by simply adding a minor 7th to the 1 chord and then continue a predominant progression with to 2 and possibly this time I go to 6 after the 5 7 uh, also has an interesting harmonic color going to 4 five, seven, one. Or let's consider uh, tonicizing the six chord. Um, so five of six going to six and so on. So how do I do it? I simply uh, think of uh, the chord that I want to tonicize, so in this case 6, the 6th scale degree in C is A, and a perfect fifth above that, where the uh, root of the dominant would be, is E. Then I build a major triad on E, or I can make a major minor 7th chord, and go to and resolve it then to A. So I look for a perfect fifth above uh, the root of the chord that I want to tonicize, 
or a perfect fifth above the scale degree I want to tonicize and build a major triad or a major minor seventh chord on it and then resolve it to that scale degree or to that chord. Um, so here's another example going to um, maybe tonicizing uh, the two chord. So the two chord in C is a build on D. If I want to tonicize D, I go a perfect fifth above D to A and I build a major triad or a major minor seventh chord on it. Um, so I start going to six, which is built on A, but then I make it major or major minor seventh chord. That's five seven of two going to two. I can make that major two, which becomes five of five going to five. One more thing I want to show in this major key, I can also uh, have a 5 of 5 and go to a cadential 6 4 chord because the cadential 6 4 chord has a dominant function. So, predominant chords, 5 7 of 5, going to cadential 6 4 chord and to 5. And five seven maybe and one so in a minor key I uh, we usually uh, don't tonicize the two chord because the two chord is diminished so at least we do not resolve to the two chord if we want to tonicize the second scale degree uh, then we can build a five of five on the second scale degree because 5 in C minor is G, a G chord, G major triad. A 5 of 5 would be a perfect fifth above G, which is D, which is our second scale degree. Um, so I could have a progression where I tonicize the second scale degree and build then a 5 of 5 on the second scale degree instead of a two chord because the two chord is diminished and we want we don't want to tonicize diminished triads because they are unstable uh, instable chords so how would that sound um, perhaps so first establish the key go to five five seven of two but don't go to the diminished two go to five seven of five and then go to five, five, seven, one. Um, what else can I do? Um, in the minor key, of course, there is one, the one chord uh, that is a secondary dominant and that is diatonic to its key, and that is the chord built on the seventh, on the lowered seventh scale degree on B flat. <laughs> because um, you may have labeled this with a Roman 7, the uppercase Roman 7 as a major triad, um, but uh, really it is 5 of 3. So I can build a, a major triad on the lower 7 scale degree and go to 3. And after 3 I can go to 6 if I want to have a long progression. And four, then two. I'm playing it in first inversion because it's a diminished triad uh, to lessen the dissonance. Five, four, five, seven. So it opens up lots of possibilities. The same with secondary leading tone chords. And secondary leading tone chords are. Um, always build a minor, uh, the root of the secondary leading tone chord would be a minor second below the scale degree uh, that is to be tonicized. So let's say I want to uh, tonicize scale degree four, which is F, 
um, so my four chord. I want to tonicize my four chord in a minor key. Um, so I could build, I would go a minor second below F, which is E, and build a fully diminished seventh chord on it. Go to four, maybe then go to two, go to five, go to one. It's beautiful. Um, or perhaps uh, tonicizing the sixth chord with a uh, with a leading tone chord. Now the sixth chord in a minor key is built on A flat. It's a major triad, so a minor second below A flat is G. Of course, we have a G chord, which is the dominant chord. But if I build a fully diminished seventh chord on it, then it leads to A. So how does this sound? Seven diminished seven of six going to six, going to four, maybe going to five seven of five, going to five seven. Anticipation makes it stronger and resolving it. Uh, how do we orally identify them, let's say, in a harmonic dictation, or we listen to a piece of music and we just want to orally identify them? Well, um, when we um, hear a chord that doesn't seem to fit into uh, the diatonic fabric, uh, harmonic fabric of the key, and a chord uh, that at the same time wants to resolve, um, so back in C major, This chord does not is not diatonic and it sticks out because of that and it also has a strong need to resolve and then it resolves so that was the five seven of two going to two um, now in this case if we hear maybe that we have a and the bass uh, then we know it's five seven of two but um, most often we just hear it's five seven of something and then we focus on where does it resolve to okay it resolves to minor triad uh, has the second scale degree and the bass must be a two chord so five seven so then the chord before that must have been five seven of two going to two uh, going to going to five to one so we uh, listen, we identify a chord that has a need to resolve to a chord other than the tonic, then we focus on where does it resolve to and identify that diatonic chord, and then we know what the secondary chord was. Um, so I, I hope you will also go to the piano and just start playing some progressions. And it's beautiful if you know this harmonic vocabulary, you can simply start improvising any kind of beautiful harmonic progression. And uh, here are, um, here's one more question. Are there secondary predominance? We talked about secondary dominance. Are there secondary predominance? Yes, there are, especially in the romantic music, but they are not as common as secondary dominance and secondary leading tone chords. Secondary predominance progress to secondary dominance. They further expand the tonal harmonic vocabulary. And here are two examples. The first one in a major key, um, where I um, played a two of two going to five of two going to two. Let's listen to this. And I have another progression in a minor key uh, where one goes to four of four to five of four to five, seven to one.
So one uh, could ask uh, here the four of five. So five in, let's say, C minor, five and C is G, a four above that, the fourth above that is C. Um, so we could label this, so there's a major triad on the first scale degree, which we could label as uppercase Roman one, but it really functions with a pull toward the five chord. So it is in this case better labeled as four or five, going to five or five, going to five. So we covered uh, in this lecture um, secondary dominance. We got acquainted with them. We heard and saw some examples. We analyzed several secondary functions. We constructed them and we use them in musical contexts. Um, again, my name is Nico Schriller. I teach at Texas State University. Here you have some contact information. Feel free to visit my YouTube channel where I have many instructional videos on music theory, oral skills, and music research methods. And uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention.